Welcome to the channel. I am Richard Holder. Thank you for joining me. Please make sure before we get going, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this cool testing. Today we're looking at modular Fords. All of the information carries over to every other motor, but today it's all about modular Fords. First off, we have a 4.6 liter two valve motor that we're going to modify, then add boost, then add more boost. We're going to follow that up with a test on a 5.4 liter four valve motor. We're going to add boost. Then we're going to add ice water to the intercooler. Lots of cool stuff. Let's get going. Okay, guys, get things started. We're going to show you how well the modular Ford engine 4.6 liter two valve and later on a 5.4 liter four valve, how much they like boost. And that shouldn't come as any big surprise because really every motor wants boost and every motor, motor needs boost. And the 4.6 liter is no exception. So let's take a look at a 4.62 valve that I did. This started out as a non-PI motor, meaning a 96 to 98, non-power improved version. And then later on, what they did was put the better cylinder heads on and the better intake manifold, different camshaft with higher lift, and they made more power. They went from 225 to, to rated numbers to 260. But I ran this, got a motor from the wrecking yard, ran a non-PI motor. We ran it with long tube headers, no accessories no air intake, obviously no cats or anything, and with an optimized tune. And that's why this shows a little bit more power than the motor was rated at, because when they rate it, they rate it with everything. But let's get going. Uh, this is a non-PI motor, so we ran it with all of that stuff as described with a fast XFI management system. This combination produced 266 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, this was designed much like its previous 5-liter Brother, it was designed to make lots of torque and not nearly very much horsepower. <laughs> this would change a little bit when they added the PI version. But here's what happened when we made modifications to it, because like any Ford motor, they obviously respond well to modifications. You can see we picked power all the way up over, over 400, 407 horsepower. Torque, peak torque was way up to for 393 foot-pounds. We lost a little bit of power down here below 3,500 because we used fairly healthy camshafts. But what we did was we took a set of ported PI heads. These are from Total Engine Airflow. Stage two ported PI heads. We used the PI intake manifold, an AccuFab throttle body and elbow. And we put a set of comp cams in this thing also. So let's take a look at the comp cams that we used. We used the Extreme Energy 274. We actually used the early 500 lift XE 274 cam. So I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can see what they are. But you could also use, unfortunately, they don't use a direct version of the 274 as the higher lift version, but they have other cams that are higher lift. Quite honestly, if I was putting this together and I was going to run it in a car, I probably would pick the, the bigger PI version of the 262 cams because I think that that's a better combination. But here's what happened when we added boost to this. Let's take a look. We added our Vortex supercharger. And I'm going to go ahead and zing myself all the way up here out of the way so we can see better. So we have the stock combination that made 265. We had the modified combination that made 406. And then after adding our supercharger, we were up to 623 horsepower. And I'll go ahead and put the boost curve up here. And I say boost curve rather than just giving you the peak number because on a centrifugal supercharger, what happens is you make a lot less boost down low than you do at the top. We have our typical kind of rising curve. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. But over 600 horsepower, 620 horsepower with a Vortec. This was an S trim with an intercooler on it. But let's take a look at one more test that we did on this 462 valve and then we can jump up to the 5.4. So real quickly before we get to the 5.4 liter version, I want to take a look, I want to show you another test that we did with this 4.6. So we ran our Vortec with the 274 cam, but we also ran the Vortec with the stock cams. So I wanted to show you how much power the cams were worth on this because they're worth quite a bit. So it's very important to have good NA power before adding boost. This is a pretty good illustration on why. So we can see, I'm going to go ahead and label these, but with a stock cam, our combination produced 550 horsepower. But with the comp cams and the blower, we didn't change the pulley ratio, didn't change any of that, made 623 horsepower. So we picked up quite a bit of power, went from 550 to 623, so 73 horsepower or so from changing the cams. It just goes to show you the more efficient the motor is naturally aspirated, the more power it makes under boost. And here's one more example. We did one final thing on this. 
where we ran this thing and made even more power up over 700 near 750 744.9 so 745 but we made a couple of changes one we put a bigger supercharger on it we put a jt trim we also changed the inner core we actually used two cores because the core that vortec uses on that 462 valve kit actually starts becoming fairly restrictive above the 600 horsepower range where we were running it so we used actually two of them we made a custom one and we were blowing into it i think we may have also changed the cams in this motor as well i'm going to go ahead and see if we've got our test description here ported heads yeah 7.5 pulley 3.33 blower pulley and the JT trim, and it did run more boost, and I'll go ahead and put the boost level up here. But we ran into the same problem with all of these, and, and we'll, we'll also run into this problem later on when we applied this, essentially this kit with a Vortec on it to the larger 5.4 liter, and that's the drive pulley assembly. Um, we were using a six rib belt setup, and unfortunately didn't have everything that we needed way back, because this test was run long ago. We did not have the eight rib setup that we needed to run this because the Vortec was integrated as part of all of the accessories and we tried to run it the way that we normally run it on the dyno and had trouble doing that and we had to use a short belt and configure it but what we would run into and you can see it up here at the top is that we would run into belt slippage problems trying to make this much power with with a simple six rib pulley setup the way that we had it configured on the dyno so it is one of the things to consider when you're looking at running uh, belt driven blower stuff is <laughs> you can run into belt slippage problems, especially if you're trying to do something with a six rib belt that requires an eight rib or a 10 rib. Let's check out the 5.4. Now to take a look at the smaller 4.6 liter with a Vortec, let's step things up. And that was a two valve. Let's step things up to a 5.4 valve version. This, this motor actually originally came from Sean Highland. It had forged crank, forged rods, forged pistons. It was 10 to 1. It had ported navigator heads. It had his stage 2 camshafts in it. We also ran a Sullivan single plane intake manifold with an elbow and Acufab 90 millimeter throttle body. We tried a few different headers on this and ended up with a set that Mahovitz let us run, but long tube headers and collector extensions on this thing. We ran it with a fast XFI management system. We had, I think, 90 or 100 pound injectors in this thing. Oh, 61 pound injectors. That no, no wonder we were running out of fuel. <laughs> and this thing ran best, according to the notes, at 29 degrees of timing. So run in naturally aspirated form before we add boost to it, our 5.4 modified 5.4.4 valve. Produced 440-ish horsepower and peak torque checked in 390 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added our supercharger and this was another exercise and frustration for us with the 5.4. We were using basically the same setup that we ran on the 4.6 liter. But here's what happened. We were adding a, I'm gonna go ahead and move myself here and get out of the way. We added a Vortec YSI supercharger and an air to water intercore. The air to water intercore that we had, like the one that we'd run on a 4.6, was actually slightly smaller. It was the same dual core unit that I had run on my Bonneville Civic, only because it was the only one that I had laying around. But it would not be an ideal choice for this. While it worked fairly well for the 500 horsepower at the tire Civic that we were running at Bonneville, it was not ideal for this kind of flow rate because we would be pushing this thing, as you'll see. We'll be pushing this thing up fairly high, even higher if we actually didn't have belt slippage. But run with the Vortec, we produced 840-something horsepower, 42 or 3 Peak torque checked in at 689 foot-pounds. And like with the 4.6, the boost curve started at about 8 pounds because we were starting at 42 or 4,300 and rose to a peak of 15 pounds, 15.3 pounds. We also did another interesting test because we could not cure the belt slippage problem with our Citroën belt. It just, we would run the thing up and if we would try to run multiple runs, it would get even worse. We would tighten the belt as much as we could. We tried putting track bite on it. I mean, we, we know what all the tricks are. We tried all of it and we were only able to get these kinds of runs out of it. What we needed was an eight rib or a 10 rib or a cog setup so that we could make sure that the belt didn't slip. This was, we were asking way more of, of that little six rib belt than it obviously was designed to do, but that didn't stop us from doing other testing. So for instance, what we did was we replaced the ambient dyno water with ice water. And here's what happened when we did that. 
It really likes the ice water and I highly recommend it for every application. We picked up quite a bit of power. In fact, we picked up in this point, it went from 799 to 850. So it picked up 50, over 50 horsepower there. So the ice water was worth quite a bit. We didn't change the timing. All we did was add fuel because it was making more power. We wanted to keep the air fuel the same. We didn't change the pulley. We didn't change timing. This is only with the ice water and then us adding fuel because it needed more fuel because it was flowing more air. So it did definitely make more power. But again, and you can see now because we were making more power, this thing actually the belt started slipping at an early an even earlier rpm and why is that well that's because you're asking the blower to do more work which has more resistance which the belt has a harder time dealing with and so as we would add power uh the rpm that we could run this thing at would be come down and down and down as you saw so we never did care of this <laughs> so unfortunately as well as we know that it was going to work, this thing was well on its way to going over 900 horsepower without any problem. This again, this was around 15 pounds. It was doing well, especially with the ice water. I, I would like to have cured this problem and run this thing on E85. It would have been awesome. But as it was, we ended up putting two turbos on this thing and it made lots and lots of power. But even the Vortec made good power. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway running boost from a Vortec supercharger on our first 4.6 liter two valve modular motor, a modified version, and the 5.4 liter version from Sean Highland. Well, as we see, the important thing is that yes, you can add boost and yes, it makes a ton of power. Anytime you add boost to any of these motors, whether it's a modular motor, a Ford or Chevy Dodge, whatever it is, you're gonna add big chunks of power. We did exactly that. But it's very important to also remember that when you're trying to add big power, make sure that you have enough belt wrap or belt size to drive the supercharger at the power level you're trying to do. Now, lucky for you guys, the manufacturers have already done that. And this actually was more my fault than anybody's. But make sure that the belt is up to the task. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.